no, like you're way off. Like this child had an air infection and What's up you guys? Sit down and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who are new, thank you so much for choosing to spend your year whatever day that ends in a Y with me. I really appreciate that. I invite you to take a look around my channel. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. So today I am going to be talking about all of the juicy details of everything that I did on my pediatric rotation. I know that many of you already know that I'm really into women's health, but I also really like peds. And so I had a really good time on my pediatric rotation. So I did my pediatric rotation outpatient because I got a lot of peds inpatient as well uh, through the emergency department. So I was able to see a lot of peds come into the ED. But when you're doing outpatient stuff, it's a little bit different. It was a lot of, what would I call it? It was a lot of like wellness visits during that time because a lot of kids were getting ready to start applying for their new year of either college or the, a new school that they were going to. So I saw a lot of well children, which was good because it's good to see all of what the normal should look like so that you know what the abnormal looks like when you see it. So my days always started off around like 7.35, 8 o'clock. I had to be in the office for eight, but um, I would usually get there maybe like 10 to 15 minutes a little bit early just so that I can see all of the patients that we had on the schedule for the day because the practice that I was at had it so that patients could also schedule their own appointments or you know if they were calling into the physician and during off hours and she was like oh, okay bring them in in the morning that may not have been on the schedule the day before when I saw it so I would always come in a little bit early get myself settled so that I could know exactly what we we're gonna be seeing that day and I really liked it because I got to see a whole lot of patients Um, she let me go in and see pretty much everybody first and then she'd come in after me like we'd go in together she she'd have me tell her exactly what I thought and then we'd go in together so for instance um, if we had a patient in that was coming in for like um, you know sore throat symptoms well let's go with GI symptoms because we had a whole lot of that so um, stomach is hurting uh, running a little bit of a fever and they've been vomiting so I would go in and I would well first the MA would go in and triage the patient um, just kind of get their vitals and like where they're you know satting out with their o2 saturation their bp um their temperature things that it's really important when trying to diagnose like what's going on with an adolescent or a child or an infant so they would get all of those and then they would come and report it back to me and then from that moment on i would go in and so when i went in i would still you know do not really vitals but i'd still do like listen to heart lungs and um, do my own temperature because sometimes um, the temperature that they may have had initially uh, has gone up, especially if they're running like a low grade fever and they may have had medication the morning before, like when their parents woke them up and they felt that they were hot, they may have gave them, given them some meds but and brought their temperature down. But now, you know, their temperature is risen again. So it's always important to recheck the temperature um, when you're going in because you just don't know exactly where it's going to be. So from that, I would go in, I would get the history, just kind of be like, hey, so my name is Adana, I'm a PA student, what's bringing you in today? And it was really cool, you know, I'm sitting down and they're talking to me. Um, the kids that could talk to me was nice because it, it's nice talking to children. Like they say the funniest things and trying to get a history from them can be difficult but that's why you have their parents there as well to help so after I've gotten the history just kind of like going through my old cart so the onset of their symptoms the location of it the duration you know the characteristic if it was their abdomen I'd be like so does do you have pain is the pain achy is it crampy um, is it sharp help me describe the pain to tease tease that pain out and then I would ask them, you know, is there anything that makes it better or anything that makes it worse, such as eating or defecating or um, have they had like diarrhea? So, you know, I go through, try to get some of these um, things. Have they tried anything to alleviate their pain? Um, and have they had any sick contacts and are they up to date on all of their immunizations? So that's really, really big in the peds population, just understanding, hey, are these children up to date on their um, immunizations? Because that might be something that might be causing 
you know, the symptoms that they're having. So once I've gone through all of that information, then I would go and I do my physical exam. So of course I'm listening to the heart and lungs. I'm doing my own temperature. Um, and then I'm going more specific to exactly where, um, you know, their chief complaint is. So I'm not going to do a full comprehensive exam if you're coming in for stomach pain or throat pain you know i'm going to spend more time in that area but i'm going to do general things just to make sure like reflexes are intact um you know it's not anything neurological that kind of stuff so after i go through that um then i'd be like okay so you know i think that this is what's going on let me go talk to dr so-and-so and um then we'll come in together and and tell you exactly what uh, the plan moving forward is for your child or sometimes i would tell them like a tentative plan and then i would go and talk to my attending so then when i go and i'd report i would let them know like hey you know this is what i think is going on with the patient um i'd give the history um just kind of that hpi of the, the illness that they're presenting with today. And then we'd go in together and she would go in and she, she, she would talk to the patient and she does a lot of talking, which was cool. You know, like they had a really good relationship. So she'd go in and she'd speak with the patient. And then after that, she will come out and we'll tell them what they're doing, what we want them to do. And then we'll come out and we'll be like, she'll be like, oh yeah, you know, great job. You were right on the money with that one. Or no, like you're way off, like this child had an air infection. And for air infections, like some of the times, like it was really easy to tell like, hey, this is an air infection. And then some of the times it's like, well, I don't know. Like you'd see like these injected blood vessels and in the pictures that you've seen for like normal airs, it's just like, you know, white pearly TM, like everything looks great. There's no like little streaks of blood vessels being injected in, but like sometimes there is and the air is still like, pretty normal. So it was hard for me because I hadn't like seen a lot of errors, I guess you could say, but I got a lot of errors in this rotation. So um, I was able to kind of just really get good at diagnosing ear infections, which is like pretty big in the pediatric population. But that was something that I was struggling with. So yeah, it might have been like a no, you were way off. You know, it's not just this. Um, they have a, also like a concomitant ear infection or they have croup or whatever the case may be. Um, I was the one who was doing all of like the prescribing medications. So I got really good at that as well. And if you are in need of like a dose calculator, because those of you who are in medicine, you know that pediatric dosing is like absolutely crazy, right? It's not super straightforward. So you have to do all this calculation. But Hippocrates has a really good calculator um, that you, if you download the app for the Hippocrates app for your phone, once you go into that medication, um, if you put that particular dose for let's say Augmentin and you chose the, you know, a typical dose, then you just put in the child's weight and the information that it's asking for. Uh, and it calculates it out for you, which is which was like a lifesaver. Um, but I would do this throughout the day. And so I would see both sick and well visits, which was cool. Um, I do like pre-op physicals, sports physicals, uh, you know, like return to play stuff as well, which was like nice getting a wide variety. And my day was like from eight to three slash eight to two, eight to four, it depended on like how, you know, long or how packed our schedule was but um, typically it was like eight to four sometimes I would leave like a little bit later than four like five five thirty because I was charting and I got a lot of charting experience done on my pediatric rotation and I think I'll probably get a lot of experience with charting on my primary care rotation as well because I feel like outpatient is a little bit more lax in what they allow you to do. Um, in the hospital, we're not really allowed to do that for whatever reason. Um, you know, we just kind of chart in a Word document and then the PA will look at it and see if they like that and then they can just copy and paste it into their, their own chart um, and it's under their name. But for my pediatric rotation, I was just able to chart right there and, um, you know, sign my actual name to the the note along with my attending which is cool so um i did that and did it for four weeks and then i did another like elective in it because i really liked it and i was i was happy like i was in and out like eight to four it was like a nice thing um we didn't really work on thursdays it was more like an administrative day so i did independent learning independent studying which was cool so like i had a day off during the week she didn't have any weekend hours like it was amazing 
amazing. Like that was a really nice um, schedule. So, you know, that's part of trying to figure out these rotations and the specialty that you want to go into, like what schedule is it that you want? Um, and so I like that one. That was a really, really nice one. And um, I was able to like go home and see my kids and, you know, go out to the park with them and just do random things that I wasn't necessarily able to do when I was working like uh, a nine to seven or a nine to six shift um, in the ED or, you know, working 12 hour shifts, three twelves or the 24s. Um, I was able to do that uh, all throughout the week. So that was cool. But that was it. That was my pediatric rotation. I just was in and out, like seeing patients. Um, I was able to like give a couple injections, which was cool because, uh, you know, you don't really get to do that. So just kind of re-upping on what you learn in ACPs was a really like good thing for me. Um, it's a good skill set to have. Uh, and then just working on my documentation. So I really liked it. If you are interested in peds, um, I suggest that you get both outpatient and inpatient experience just to see which one you like better um, and see which lifestyle you like better. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, be sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram at adonathepa.com. Thank you guys. I will talk to you guys next time.